Jesse here, writer and co-creator of Tides. You're about to listen to our final mini episode before we take a bit of a hiatus to work on season two. While we work around the clock to bring you more content, we would appreciate if you could fill out our audience survey at bit.ly slash tides survey. That's bit.ly slash t-i-d-e-s-s-u-r-v-e-y. This survey will help us gather information on you and better create alien creatures to haunt your dreams, specifically. And also, you know, advertisers and stuff like that. You can fill out the survey anonymously, or you can be entered to win some great stickers. And everybody loves stickers. Thank you so much for listening. Tides. Hey, any of those hot dog things left? Uh, sure. One left. Do you... Um... Oh, if you were gonna have it... Uh, no, no, I made them, actually, so I've had plenty. All the ones I messed up, you know, one of the perks of cooking. Ah, oh, well then I will have the last one, thank you. No worries. Uh, I'm glad you like them. Nothing better for a chef than seeing people enjoy your food. I didn't say I liked them. Uh, oh, what's wrong with them? I mean, I I did say chef before, but I'm actually not a chef. I mean, I can cook, and I cooked those, but I haven't had formal training, and I'm sorry if I misled you. You should have let me finish. I didn't say I liked them, but I do like them. Just a dumb joke, I guess. Ha ha. Great. Uh, hey, by the way, are you Robert Montague's assistant? No, you're thinking of Marion. Marion! Uh... Where'd she go? Well, anyway, uh, I'm Erickson in astrophysics. Oh, uh, D, right? What are your pronouns? Yeah, that's me. I'm non-binary. Uh, either she, her, or they, them is fine. Oh, my my partner, Emery, they're non-binary too! Um, oh, okay, that's cool. So, are, are we, so you work with uh, Dr. Wang, right? That's right. And you're a biologist. I can tell because you have the wary demeanor of someone who's collected bear droppings while the bear is ten feet away. And the legs of a scientist that goes on more hikes than your average physicist. Yeah, uh, you got me. Uh, It's true. Lots of hiking involved at times. Uh, Not the bear droppings thing, though. I did spend a few weeks under a tree in the jungle with a raincoat and open trash bag collecting monkey urine. Ah, harsh, dude. No, it was it was only really bad when I looked up at the yeah. wrong time. Ta- it's grad school. That's that's just grad school. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I did a lot of math and statistics mostly. <sighs> Terrible. Ugh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> you got peed on, man. I'm very comfortable with my choices. And I won't shame you for it. Uh, whatever works for you. Thanks. Uh, I like to think that whatever our fields of study, scientists can find uh, common ground in our journey of discovery, uh, both the monkey's part and the math part. You know, because there's the whole, like, peeling back the veil of the unknown aspect. And... Uh-huh, sure. Totally. Yeah, it's uh, oh, it's so refreshing to meet someone who feels the same way. But also, you know, competition can be good. It breeds creativity. The best minds uh, rise to the forefront, and, and that's what's best for everyone in the long run. I think you're right that the best minds and ideas tend to take center stage. But interdisciplinary collaboration, I believe, creates the best results. Looking at academia and science in a holistic way, and not always focusing on hiring the most distinguished researchers, but the ones that work best as a team. But what kind of environment does that promote? One where any rando can just go and attach themselves to a team of more talented researchers and ride on the coattails of their achievements? Uh, No, of course not. That's... that's an extremely unhelpful attitude. Just saying... Most people who push for collaboration do it to help their own careers. It's basic self-interest, the only difference for most is that it's disguised as altruism. If they could do well enough on their own merit, they wouldn't have to collaborate. Anyway, 
I'm gonna go and eat this wonderful thing you made, so if you'll excuse me. Working together isn't pointless, you know. You'll find that out when you need something from somebody, and plenty of people will be glad to help you out just out of kindness and professional courtesy. If I needed something, I'd offer just as much in return. Isn't that kind of the same as collaboration anyway? No! Well, yes, but you're coming at it all backwards. I, is this how you are all the time? Everything has an ulterior motive and has to be balanced out? Do you keep, like, a running tally, or...? Okay, buddy. I guess I'm not hungry anymore. Do you want this weird hot dog bun thing? Would that be altruistic of me? Would that make you happy? It's not a weird hot dog thing, it's a pig in a blanket and you're gonna eat it because I made it and it's good. It's great, actually. It's something you can't do and I can. So eat it and think about that. Fine, whatever. I still wanted it anyway. Damn it, this is wonderful though. You're goddamn right it is! Tides is written by Jesse Shushu and directed by Ayla Taylor and Jesse Shushu. It is produced by Ayla Taylor and edited by Bridge Gein. The voice of Dr. Victor Stevens is Jordan Higgs and Dr. D. Erickson is Phoebe Joy. Special thanks to Sarah Durst for designing our cover art and merch, which you can find at tidespodcast.com slash store. You can find our transcripts on our website tidespodcast.com and follow us on Tumblr and Twitter at Tides Podcast. If you like our show and like to help us continue making it, you can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash tides podcast special thanks to angel acevado and ole bjorsvik for their support and especially to gemini watson violet abysme and charles for their particularly generous contributions this episode i want to recommend moonbase theta out the last moonbase is 20 weeks from being decommissioned most of the crews in stasis awaiting retrieval in a series of short weekly broadcasts reporting to management back on Earth, Roger shares the stark beauty, the wry humor, and the isolation and frustration, the romance and the tragedy as the remaining crew members see the operation through to its scheduled end. And now... This is Dr. Desdemona Erickson, and this is an uncomfortable fact. Approximately 3% of Antarctica is frozen penguin urine. <laughs>